Many industries use forklifts in numerous work settings, primarily to move materials. Forklifts are an important part of material handling, but when not used properly, they can be very dangerous. Each year in the United States, nearly 100 workers are killed and another 20,000 are seriously injured in forklift-related incidents. These statistics indicate that many workers and employers are not using or may be unaware of safety procedures and the proper use of forklifts to reduce the risk of injury and death. For this reason, it is imperative that all forklift operators receive periodic training. This way, any bad habits developed can be corrected quickly before they become part of the operator's daily routine. This video program is designed to assist forklift trainers with their safety training efforts and gives a brief overview of forklift training procedures and methods which may be employed. It should be used in conjunction with the more comprehensive written manual, A Trainer's Guide to Forklift Safety. But I'm so frustrated Hello to my loneliness I guess that ignorance is bliss Take me back to before the new Rewind, take it out of cue Innocence can be a young man's game Signed up for the hall of shame I wish I knew specified in Cal OSHA General Industry Safety Order 3668. This regulation provides information about forklift safety training requirements, safety training program content, and forklift certification requirements. A pre-trip safety check must be completed each day before operating your forklift. Cal OSHA regulations mandate that a forklift must be checked once per shift for safety deficiencies before it is operated. The safety check is an important part of the forklift safety program because it helps identify mechanical failures. This leads to fewer mechanically related forklift safety hazards, which may lead to less injuries to the forklift operator and other employees. Prior to the safety check, the operator should review the manufacturer's forklift manual to become familiar with the forklift's operating controls and performance limitations. When conducting the safety check, a checklist should be used to document safety deficiencies and mechanical problems. The checklist also serves as proof that the safety check was performed. Use a checklist specific to your workplace to document the safety check. Be sure and give attention to the proper functioning of tires, horn, lights, battery, controller, brakes, steering mechanism, cooling system, and the lift system of the forklift. These safety checks must be completed at least once per shift. When the checklist has been completed, it should be filed and maintained with other safety records. When a deficiency is identified, Notify your supervisor immediately so that it can be corrected. If the repairs on the forklift cannot be made immediately, remove the forklift from service. This prevents others from unknowingly using the disabled lift. Driving a forklift is very different than operating a car. Unlike a car, the rear wheels are used to steer the forklift. 
The center of gravity of a forklift is higher than a car, so the weight of the forklift is distributed differently. Due to these factors, a sharp turn combined with too much speed can cause a rollover accident. Forklifts are also commonly operated on wet or smooth surfaces, which may be slippery. Conditions such as these may also lead to accidents if the forklift operator is not working safely. Securely fasten your seatbelt at all times while operating the forklift. Be sure to use the correct personal protective equipment for the job and never allow passengers to ride on the forks of the lift for any reason. Operate the forklift at a safe speed, even when there is little forklift or pedestrian traffic. When driving behind other forklifts, maintain a safe distance of approximately three truck lengths and never pass at intersections or blind spots. Slow down and sound the horn when approaching blind corners and treat all cross aisles with caution. Watch carefully for holes in the driving surface that can lead to an accident. Many forklift drivers are injured when they are run over by their own forklift. This occurs when an operator exits the forklift before it has come to a complete stop. When exiting your forklift, always come to a complete stop. Lower the forks to the ground and set the parking brake. When leaving the forklift unattended, set the parking brake, bring the mast to the vertical position, lower the forks to the ground, turn the forklift off, and remove the keys. A forklift is considered to be unattended when the driver travels more than 25 feet from the forklift or when the forklift is out of the driver's sight, according to Cal OSHA. Driving a forklift up or down inclines, ramps, or hills presents special hazards that forklift operators should be aware of. When ascending or descending inclines or ramps, forklift operators should drive slowly with the load kept upgrade and low to the ground. On all grades, keep the load slightly tilted back if necessary. Never attempt to turn a forklift on an incline or ramp. It could affect the forklift's stability and lead to a serious accident. Lifting and transporting loads is an activity that a forklift operator performs many times during the workday. For this reason, it is important to use safe procedures each time a lift is performed. The maximum load capacity and the load center of the forklift must be posted on each forklift and the nameplate must be legible to the driver. Before starting a lift, know the weight of the cargo and make sure it is not beyond the rated lifting capacity of the forklift you are operating. If a load you are trying to lift is too heavy for the forklift, the rear of the forklift will raise. This changes the forklift's center of gravity and increases the risk of an accident, which could result in a serious injury or cause damage to the forklift. Each load should be stacked properly and the weight of the load should be evenly distributed before attempting a lift. Never lift or transport a load that is leaking liquids or material. If a load is damaged, contact your supervisor immediately. If the load being carried obstructs forward view, lift or lower the load to the proper traveling height and drive with the load trailing. Keep all parts of your body within the running lines of the forklift and do not place any part of your body in the forklift's mast or other moving parts. When preparing to load or unload a truck, trailer, or railroad car, it is important that the truck or trailer be secured in a fixed position. This is not only a good safety practice, the law also requires it. Before entering trailers or railroad cars with the forklift, check the floor for structural weaknesses. Don't drive in or out of trailers or railroad cars unless the brakes are set and the wheels are blocked or restrained. When the trailer is blocked or restrained, it is less likely to creep away from the loading dock, which can lead to a serious accident. Vehicle restraints are another loading dock safety feature. 
loading dock vehicle restraints help prevent trucks and trailers from leaving the dock when the forklift is entering or exiting the trailer. If possible, block the wheels for extra safety. Landing gear should be used when loading or unloading trailers. Using the landing gear helps prevent tip over and upending accidents. This can occur when the trailer becomes unbalanced due to the loading or unloading of heavy payloads. Forklifts and pedestrians are a dangerous combination. According to the National Traumatic Occupational Fatality Surveillance System, more than 35% of the forklift fatalities that occurred from 1980 to 1994 were the result of accidents involving forklifts and pedestrians. Therefore, forklift traffic areas should be separated from pedestrian traffic areas, preferably with a physical barrier. It is also important that all employees receive safety training about the dangers of working near forklifts. Forklift drivers should never drive up to anyone standing in front of a fixed object. The pedestrian could be crushed between the forklift and the object. Similarly, no employee should stand, work, or pass under the elevated part of a forklift, loaded or unloaded. All forklift drivers should use their horns to alert other employees when they are in the proximity of pedestrians. If the ambient noise level in the workplace is high, then the forklifts must be equipped with flashing lights to alert employees about the presence of forklifts in the area. Fueling and battery charging are routine tasks that the forklift operator must perform. To ensure safety, it is important that all forklift operators follow the correct fueling and battery charging procedures at all times. When fueling the forklift with propane or gasoline, keep these safety tips in mind. Never fill the fuel tank while the engine is running or if the engine is hot or smoking. Make sure that all fuels are away from ignition sources and never smoke when fueling the forklift or when a fuel source is nearby. Each time the forklift is fueled, the appropriate personal protective equipment should be used. Forklifts should only be fueled in designated fueling areas. Designated fueling areas must be equipped with a fire extinguisher and should be well lit, clean, and safely ventilated. Before charging the batteries on the forklift, read the manufacturer's instruction manual. Wear the correct personal protective equipment for the job. Battery charging stations should be clean, free from ignition sources, and well ventilated. To help protect the employee in the event that battery fluids splash near the eyes or on the skin, an emergency eye wash and shower station must be located no more than a 10-second walk from the battery charging area. Forklift operators need to be vigilant when working in enclosed spaces. Special safety precautions need to be followed to avoid potentially serious injuries. Forklift operators should avoid prolonged use of a gas or liquid propane forklift when in an enclosed space. Some examples of potential enclosed spaces include cold storage rooms, trailers, railroad cars, and warehouses. Extended use of gas or propane forklifts in enclosed areas is dangerous and may lead to a buildup of carbon monoxide gas. Carbon monoxide gas, which is emitted in the forklift's exhaust, is dangerous because it displaces oxygen in the air. A forklift operator who is exposed to high levels of carbon monoxide gas may become ill due to a lack of oxygen. Carbon monoxide gas is odorless, tasteless, and colorless. To help avoid poisoning from carbon monoxide in enclosed work areas, use electric forklifts or use properly placed carbon monoxide detection monitors in enclosed spaces where...